If you follow my channel, you know that I interact with my snakes quite a bit. I let some of them roam. I do some handling. I let some of them roam. I got a great suggestion from a viewer, and that is why we are doing a day in the life of my snakes. Art's expensive, and that's an original piece, so. Welcome to the Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Detective Inspector Rorschach, and he gets specific interactions based on his personality. We're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna show you some real world examples of handling and of snakes free roaming. You let them free roam? Gross, they'll leave slime trails everywhere. My brother slash cameraman, everyone. Kent, it's a snake, not a slug. Same family. Animals with no arms. Snakes, slugs, fish, same family. I'm glad you're not a science teacher, Kent. Before we get into this, I wanna say a couple things. One of them is that, you know, I let my snakes roam and I handle them and such like that because that's how I choose to keep my animals. There are a lot of people who keep their snakes in a very well set up enclosure and don't handle them at all. And the snakes don't come out of that enclosure. And that's totally fine. That's a fine way to keep a snake. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Um, snakes don't particularly enjoy being handled and they don't crave your attention. So uh, having them in a well set up enclosure that they can, you know, maybe it's a display snake, maybe it's like a green tree python or something like that, that uh, is not super handleable anyway. Uh, that's totally fine. Snakes, snakes can be kept in a number of different ways and this, you know, I just show you how I keep snakes because it's how I do it. But I certainly don't judge other people for keeping reptiles differently than the way I do it. And I think that's a good attitude to have in general in the reptile community and all the sub communities like ball pythons or crested geckos or whatever. Uh, to, you know, not judge people for doing it differently. Also, this is a day in the life. Uh, this is not every day and it's not every snake. I try to work with some of my snakes each day when I'm here and when I can, but um, I, I don't always get to them all. And that's okay. They certainly don't need to be out and about or be handled every single day of their life. And uh, I'm sure that they would prefer not to be. So I work with them and I'm gonna show examples of that, but that's not necessarily all in one day. So here's how this generally works. Babies usually just get handling sessions. They might get uh, some explore time in the playpen. Sub-adults get handling sessions and uh, some out of the tub roaming time, but I supervise them a lot because they're, they're not as big. And adults can roam freely or not. Uh, some of them choose to roam and are fine doing so because they don't get themselves lost. And others don't free roam at all because they can't be trusted like one detective inspector that we all know and love. You can't be trusted. Yeah, I do not trust that face. Hey everybody, Future Bob here, back with another fancy hat from the future and appreciation for my Patreon supporters. Here is the mid-video handwritten credit scroll, scroll of Patreon supporters. These people are all helping me to do some really cool things with the channel. Uh, especially in the very near future. And I super appreciate them. There's a third tier now. And the reason that I uh, did this third tier, which I'll show you in a second, is t-shirts just came in, you guys. I got a whole big box of t-shirts and those are going to the tier three people. This is the flaming beard tier. That's what I named it because I can come up with a name myself of the tier. Look at that, flaming beard. Anyway, Patreon supporters, thank you so much. So we're gonna use a few of my snakes and I'm gonna give you examples of what their personalities are like and what I do as far as out of the enclosure time for them based on their age, their size, their personality, just sort of where they're at in general uh, in their little snake development. Uh, and you know, what I'm hoping is that people can go, oh, that snake is kind of like mine and maybe they'll get some ideas of, of what they can do with them. So let's start with the inspector. 
This young man usually comes out maybe just a couple days a week. He's at this point not super comfortable with, with being out and being handled, although he's getting better. I've been taking him outside more often. He's definitely not comfortable with the big blue open sky. And um, so I take him outside and sit down with him for 10 or 15 minutes. And then I put him back in his enclosure and he goes, oh, thank God. Because uh, he would definitely prefer to be in his hide. He's, he's a snake that stays in his hide almost all the time. I don't let him free roam because he would find the smallest little crevice to crawl into, one that I didn't even know existed. I'd be like, how did that hole get in the wall? And he'd be in there and I'd never find him again. Do I have hard evidence to support this theory? No, but look at that face. Would you trust that? Come on. But really, uh, the fact is, I know my snake and I know that he would easily get himself lost. So the rule with handling him is I either keep hands on him or I keep him in some very well-defined boundaries like the playpen uh, with the top zipped up on it so that he can't because he can easily get out of the playpen too. Right? Right, you little sneaky fella? Hi. You ready to go back in your hide? Hmm? You seem to be doing so well, but I need to keep doing this video. So we're talking about snake personalities here, and I think it's a good thing to remember that just because your snake acts a certain way right now, that doesn't mean that they're going to be like that tomorrow. Uh, snakes go through all sorts of physical and mental hormonal changes that might alter their personality a little bit. And the personality is just, you know, what do they have a tendency to do? Um, I recently posted an Instagram reel that uh, was pretty cool, but only partially true. Uh, here, I'll just show it to you. Snakes are creatures of habit, and they always tend to go to the same spot when they're done exploring. Damar is almost always going to be behind this bookcase. Lydia Dietz will always venture into this hide box on top of Echo's enclosure. And Echo will always be on the ladder because I make sure she stays there. She's very tiny. So that reel, again, was partially true. Those are behaviors that I can count on from those three snakes right now. But I know that any day that can change. That's kind of what their tendencies have been for a while. Uh, but they'll eventually find new tendencies and do those for a while. And then those could change at any time. I have three big females that come out a lot. Freya, Damara, and Lucille. They've been here for a long time and they know the room. Uh, what usually happens when I have time, I wake up really early in the morning and I'll just open all three of those tubs. And those tubs will stay open for like an hour because sometimes it takes them that long to wake up, realize that a tub's open. If they're in a hide, they're, they start poking out of their hide. And then if they decide to come out, they can come out and stay out for as long as I can have them out. You know, if I'm leaving or something, then I gotta put them away, but, but they'll be out for a while. And sometimes within an hour or so, they don't come out and that's okay, I just close the tub. It's, it's up to them. So there are some differences though, based on their personality. And let's start with Freya. Freya is not as comfortable with handling. So uh, she, tends to come out of the tub pretty often when I when I open it for her. And she likes to explore a little bit, but not around out in the open. She goes under the couch and explores behind my couch. And there's a bookcase back there that she can kind of go back and forth. And then she tends to curl up on top of some sound blankets or in between the sound blankets that are, that are under my couch. And I can count on her pretty much to be there for hours uh, if, if she wants to. And then I usually end up picking her up and putting her back in her tub when, when I need to have her back. I, I still handle her. I, you know, I still give her some handling sessions, but I don't spend a lot of time trying to make her hang out with me because she'd rather be on her own. So I let her be on her own. Damara also likes to hang out under the couch or behind the bookcase and she'll hang out there for hours, but she's more tolerant of handling. And oftentimes I can set her in my lap and she'll curl up. And if she's happy with my body warmth, She'll just stay on my lap. She has no need to feel like she needs to hide somewhere or be in a dark space or whatever. So Damara will just sit in my lap and binge watch stuff with me. We're currently watching the live action version of Cowboy Bebop on Netflix, and we highly recommend it. We're only three episodes in, but recommend. I have a Netflix and chill joke that I just thought of about you two, but it's inappropriate. I'm sure it is, Kent. You want to just tell me later? Yeah, it's pretty funny though, because you know how Netflix and chill means like, Kent, sorry. Lately, Lucille has not been coming out of her tub as much, but usually when she comes out, she's a big explorer. So I just keep my eye on her and she's less predictable where she's gonna end up because she, does, she, hasn't, she hasn't really established a pattern because she just likes to 
cruise all over the place and look at things. She's also really good with handling, so she ends up in my lap or a lot of times just around my neck uh, for a while during the day. So those three snakes get the most freedom out of everybody because they're relatively predictable and they're big snakes. If I lose track of a six or seven pound snake in this room, it's gonna be pretty easy to find them. That being said, I do keep an eye on them and, and double check their whereabouts a lot. If Freya's under the couch for five hours, she might be in the same spot for five hours, but I'm checking on her every half hour to see if she's woken up and decided to move somewhere. Kata here is also a big snake, but she is relatively new and still getting used to things. So she gets handling time like this. She's also not as comfortable with, with human interaction. Uh, so we're, but she's getting much better. So she gets some handling time like this, uh, maybe three, four days a week. And uh, this is, you know, if she's not digesting food or in shed, that goes with all the snakes that I'm talking about. Um, but then she also gets some time, like I do with the hatchlings, where I just open her tub and sit there next to her tub uh, while it's open. And it's probably not her favorite thing in the world, but I want to give her uh, some time hanging out with me where I'm not handling her like this, you know, so this is, this is good, but I also want her to see me, uh, and not necessarily have me pulling her out of her tub, you know? Uh, and then if she decides to come out of her tub one of these days, I'll let her do that. And then I'll just follow her closely, you know, as she roams about to see if I can identify some patterns. And then once I know what her pattern is, I can sort of determine how much, uh, freedom, she, she gets as far as, do I need to follow her all over the place or uh, will she just go under the couch and hang out for hours? Lydia Dietz is a growing sub-adult and she's kind of like Damara and Lucille in that she's happy to come out and roam. She's happy to be handled, whatever. The difference with Lydia Dietz though is that she is always at the front of her tub wanting to come out. She's also the only snake that I have that doesn't use a hide in her enclosure. Although when she's out and about, she'll find a hide and use it, but she doesn't, she doesn't use it if it's in her tub. So she comes out more than any of my snakes just because she always is wanting to. So I just open her tub and let her out. And because she's not a, you know, 1500, 2000, 3000 gram adult yet, I still follow her around when she's out and uh, kind of keep an eye on her because even though she'd be pretty easy to find, she can wedge herself into places that a big snake like Kata here would not be able to get herself into. So Echo here, who matches my shirt perfectly today, gets a lot of time out of her enclosure. And the reason is that her species, she's a super dwarf reticulated python and reticulated pythons are more active than ball pythons. So she gets a lot of handling time and she does really well with it, but handling a reticulated python is a lot different than handling a ball python in that she would never just curl up in my lap. If I have her on my arm or in my hands, she's always moving. She's always either trying to interact with me, checking out my face, climbing up on top of my head, or just moving around somewhere. So I usually have my attention more on her when I'm handling her just because of that, that interaction that she's doing. Because she's such an active snake and she's tiny, I have some very defined boundaries for her as well. Uh, and that is this ladder. So I just make sure to keep an eye on her and make sure she stays on the ladder. And she usually does. She has enough stuff on here to keep her attention and she likes to go up and down. And sometimes she starts to go across the doors and that's where I need to keep an eye on her is if she's climbing off the ladder. But um, she does really well, and you know I think when she's a when she's a full grown snake, she'll be able to. I mean I don't know, maybe she'll be able to reach the fan from, from her ladder at that point. I I don't know. We'll we'll see. But I I feel like she'll probably be able to just free roam. We'll see. It's gonna be a while. Now Ron, on the other hand, you all know Ron. He's the father of my little hatchlings in there. Ron is always in his hide. If I ever opened his tub and he wasn't curled up in a little pile in his hide, I would think, oh my God, buddy, what's wrong? Who did this to you? Let's, here, I'm, I'll prove it. I'm gonna get some B-roll, get my phone, get this camera going. Let's just open Ron's tub right now and see. Let's just, let's just see where Ron's at. It'll be a big surprise, you guys. Oh my goodness, curled up in his head. Look at that, I see a coil at least. That's kind of rare. Hi oh, buddy, hi oh, buddy, are you in your hide? Meet you. There we go, 
Ron's in his hide, always. So Ron gets handling time. He actually, he, he wasn't very comfortable with handling for a while when I first got him. And now he's a lot more comfortable with it. He, you know, I'm always pulling him out of his hide. I'm always, I mean, I don't always do it, but anytime I pull him out of his tub, I'm pulling him out of his hide and waking him up, which I don't think is a very nice thing to do. So I don't do it very often. He's not a snake that's trying to come out and explore. And, um, but he does get handling time and he's, he's much better now. And he starts to, what happens is he wakes up and he starts moving around and exploring me. And then sometimes I'll put him on the ground and just follow him. Um, and he, he doesn't seem stressed. He seems like he's genuinely interested in, you know, he's been placed in a new environment and he's interested. So, uh, I let him do that. So he'll, that, that will probably evolve with time and, and his personality or his tendencies will probably change eventually. The hatchlings all get handling sessions and open tub sessions like I talked about with Kata. And I think I talked about that in another video too about the open tub sessions I do with, with the babies. But the other day, because I was doing this video, I had the idea to try to do a little um, playpen session with the ones that there were several of them that were kind of at the front of their tub. They were awake and not in their hide. So I pulled all of the ones that were awake out and put them in the playpen together. And they explored for about 20 minutes. I think it took them 20 minutes before they were all hiding somewhere. And then I just put them back in their tub. But that was, that was their first little roaming outing in the playpen. Captain Farrell here is a cool little guy. When I first brought Captain Farrell home, he was striking at everything. If he saw movement outside his tub, he'd tag the, the tub. And he just was um, really nervous. He, you know, he'd been living in an opaque tub at Ozzy Boyd's facility. So he was used to being in a dark enclosed space and not seeing much movement. You know, he would, he would see movement if Ozzy, uh, you know, would feed him or probably change his water. And that was about it. So, you know, he comes here and he's seeing movement out of the front of, of his clear tub. And he's like, I will do violence on you. And he did. He did violence on a lot of the front of his tub. He never got me though. But Captain Farrell is a fast learner because he's now become a snake that will come out onto my hand if I open the tub. He's curious about what's going on out here. He seems to uh, enjoy exploring about. He tends to do it. So that's really cool. I'm, I'm very happy about that. That could have gone the other direction. You know, a lot of times uh, snakes that are snappy and fearful tend to stay that way for a while. But I think if they're a baby, I think it's maybe a little bit easier to mold a baby uh, than it is a, a snake that's been established as a fearful snake their whole life, you know, and they're a couple years old or something like that. So anyway, this one was, was very easy to get acclimated. Hi, buddy. Hi. Are you checking out my face? Look at how cool he is. Leopard inchy pied. Het hypo. Poss Het Ultra Mel. So cool, though. That, that inchy leopard on, against the pied is awesome. You're a cool snake. Yeah, you ready to go back? There you go. Oh, you're exploring? All right, I'll keep you out. He wants to stay out. All right, we'll go on to the next thing with him in my hands, I guess. Oh, you know what? Let's do let's do Ken's Corner. We'll cut to Ken's Corner right now. How about that? Hi, I'm Ken's Corner, and this is the... No, um, welcome. Today, I'm standing outside because there are snakes free roaming inside the house. And as an employee of Green Room Pythons, it's important for me to get my work done. And since it's a safety hazard death trap in there, I'm going to do my work remotely from outside. What kinds of work do I do, you ask? Well, once a week, I film a video for green room pythons. I don't clean enclosures or feed snakes, which is what I was originally hired to do, but no way. I also don't clean the common area because he can hire a janitor for that if he wants. I was supposed to be the marketing department, but uh, it's really hard to come up with ideas and get them approved and whatever. So I guess there's a lot of stuff that I don't do here, but it's a full-time job to do the things that I do and don't do here at Green Room Python. Oh, yeah, and Kent's Corner. I also do Kent's Corner. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, everybody's favorite corner. Thank you, Kent, for the reminder of what your paycheck is not going towards each week.
I don't even charge him equipment rental fees. This is my personal equipment right here. I make decisions about how I'm going to interact with each snake and how much freedom I'm going to give them based on their age, size, and a lot of it is personality. Um, the inspector gets about 20 minutes max before I put him back. Freya was under the couch the other day for five hours. So it's very different based on the individual snake. Hi. You want to you want tongue flick on my hand for a minute? I see you up there. Are you, are you supervising from the top? Snakes aren't physically fragile animals, but I do consider them sort of emotionally fragile because they get scared easily. And it's because they're wired to always be looking for predators. So, you know, you could have your snake out in your lap and your snake knows that it's sitting in your lap and, and you've got a hand on it, right? You could bring another hand in front of its face and it could flinch. And a lot of people go, oh, well, you're not a very smart animal, are you? I mean, you're literally sitting in my lap and my hand is me, so that it's just me. Come on. But I think snakes are seeing the world in a little bit different light. They, they, they register things differently. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Okay, so something to think about with regard to snake behavior or, or snake understanding, how they understand things, that doesn't get talked about very much. If I, as a human being, walk into a room, I can look all around that room and assess the situation. Oh, there's my friend Steve. Steve comes up, reaches his hand out. That hand is a hand that clearly belongs to Steve. I don't even have to think about that. And he wants to shake my hand, so I shake his hand. He could walk away to the other side of the room and come back and give me a high five. And I don't think anything of it. I give him a high five, that's still Steve and that's still his hand. I don't know why Steve would shake my hand, walk away, and then come back and give me a high five. I haven't thought this scene out very well in my head. It doesn't matter. Even though that's odd behavior from Steve, I still am not scared because I know this entire situation in the room and I'm going to easily be able to tell if the situation changes. So there's no way to know what is actually going on in this little brain right here. But I'm going to take a guess and whether my guess is perfectly accurate or not, I think that this can be used as a model to have a little bit better empathy for what a snake might experience. Let's imagine that a snake sort of assesses the world with blinders on. And I don't know the ins and outs of snake vision. I don't know how far they can actually perceive things. I know that they can detect movement from you know 10 or 15 feet away, maybe even more, but I don't know how much they can visually determine what that is and, unless it's close up. So, uh, We'll think about that as, as blinders. You're, you're a little snake and you've got blinders on, basically. So a snake in my house might move from the wood floor onto the carpeting, and they're gonna tongue flick on that carpeting a little bit and assess that that is a safe area for them to move onto. That's just the carpeting. So they right now know the wood floor and the carpet. I can sit down in front of them and put my hand right there in front of their, their face, and they'll tongue flick on my hand for a minute and determine that hand is a familiar smell. I know that that's safe. That's never hurt me before. So that's good. So they're safe there. Now, they, they didn't go, that's Bob. I know that dude. They're just, with their blinders, they're just, this is a hand and they don't really understand what a hand is, but they know that this is a thing that they've crawled on before and it's safe. I could put my other hand there and that's a whole new thing for them to, to explore and check out and they go, oh, that smells like the other thing. I'm familiar with that. That's okay. There's two of these things that are in front of me now. Um, it doesn't matter if I personally am in front of them or if they, if they understand that these hands that, that they know are part of me, like th that awareness may not even be there for them. Uh, but that's okay. But these are, these are little micro situations that they have to assess. They're not assessing an entire room. They're not assessing even an entire person. I don't think, uh, even though, you know, this little guy might know that he's crawling on me. He's, he's totally on me right now. I think he gets it that, that he's on a uh, large monster that's nice to him. But if I were to move away from that snake that's on the carpet and then come back, they have to assess the situation again. They've got to figure out what that is that's coming back because it could be a predator. We know that there's not a predator in the room, but they don't. So they've got to get that little tongue going and get that Jacobson's organ going to see what's happening. And if they don't have time to do that, if I come up on the snake really fast, they're gonna flinch and move away because it's better to react and ask questions later with their little tongue in Jacobson's organ. 
right? And with, with some species, that means bite first and ask questions later. With a ball python, it's usually flinch and try to get, get away from the situation and then, and then check it out and, and try to see what's, what's going on. But it's because they're, they're doing these little, they have this little micro environment that we don't even see because we're, we have a bird's eye view of everything. We can assess a whole big situation and they don't see the world like that. Look at him. He's trying to be a neck snake. You're too small to be a neck snake, little man. That's too, you're too small for that. You gotta, you gotta grow a little bit. Look how cute he is, you guys. He's so, he's so happy to explore my shirt. So even if the snake is familiar with the room, there could always be a predator. And whether I'm right on or not about the way snakes see the world with that little blinders thing, I think that, that we can agree that snakes are always concerned about their safety and security, oftentimes first, right? And that mean, that's because there could always be a predator. And they're kind of looking at things from that angle in, in these little micro... Uh, scenarios where we have a bird's eye view of an entire room. They've got these little micro situations that they're coming across as they move through the room and they're constantly assessing whether it's safe or not. It's not that they're dumb. You know, we, we move away and then come back and they get scared and we move away and come back and they get scared. That's not them being dumb. That's them being really cautious and not, not understanding that we are the only being in the room that's going to approach them. They don't know that. So with this mindset that snakes might view the world with these little micro situations helps me at least to, to kind of manage their potential stressors when they're out and about and interacting with me. Okay, you guys, so that is a look at a few of my snakes and their personalities and how I deal with them. I hope that you enjoyed the video and maybe you got something from it. I appreciate those of you who have hit like. Um, I appreciate the vote of confidence for those who have hit subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next week. This is going to be such a long video. I don't think my brain can make short videos. I think I have a brain disorder. <laughs>